uh, Michelle Gross for United Against Police Brutality. Everyone give her a hand, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to be part of this event today. We are honored to be able to speak to you. Um, Communities United Against Police Brutality has been involved with this case since day one, and we intend to continue being involved with this case to the very end. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this incident and about the lack of police accountability. When people think about this incident, they think about Jason Anderson. They think about the fact that he got fired, then he got rehired, now he's been fired again, and that kind of stuff. But I gotta tell you that all this firing, even if he stays terminated, is not enough. Because this case, this case is about not just the racism of Jason Anderson, the vicious, brutal murder that Jason Anderson did. It's not just about that. And it's not just about the sergeant who brought the throwdown gun onto the scene and left it by Jason Anderson's body. And it's not just about the police administration who put into place an elaborate cover-up based on lies. And this is not just about the courts, which are so afraid of upsetting the status quo that justice was never, ever part of their equation. It's not about those things. This case is the crucible in which the community pins its hopes for overturning police brutality and corruption and for gaining accountability. It is the sacred ground. This ground is sacred ground, hallowed ground. It's the battleground between a system hell-bent on covering for brutal cops and a community even more determined even more determined to achieve justice for this family and for the community and for accountability against brutal police. That's why we're here. Yes, we want justice for this family. Absolutely, we demand it. But we also demand justice for the whole community because sadly, in the four years since Fong Lee was brutally murdered, many other people have died at the hands of the Minneapolis police and other area police departments. This has to stop now. As I said, our organization, Communities United Against Police Brutality, has stood with this family from day one. We will stand with this family until they get justice, and they are going to get justice. But we're going to make sure they get justice. And we're not going to stop until they do. And the same holds true for the whole community. The whole community is going to get justice. We're going to rein in these brutal cops. We're going to shut down their police state. We're going to stop police brutality and hold the cops accountable. I want to tell you that on October 22nd is the National Day of Protest Against Police Brutality. We will be holding a march down Lake Street. More details to come out. After that march down Lake Street, we will end our march at Favor Cafe so that we can hold a fundraiser to raise money for this family to have the money they need to take this, court, this case all the way. Going to the U.S. Supreme Court is tremendously expensive. Continuing to work on this case, there's many, many expenses involved. This family cannot do this alone. This case is crucial to the community, and victory in this case is absolutely essential. We must stand with this family, so any chance you get, reach in your pocket, liberate some of those little pictures of dead white guys, put them in the bucket, and help this family out, because we have to stand with this family, take this case all the way. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to the continuing the struggle, standing shoulder with shoulder by this family. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Give it up for Michelle again, please. Very powerful woman. Up next, we have um, Dio Robinson from Community United Against Police Brutality, too. Please give a hand for him. How are you guys doing today? Good. Michelle kind of said everything, but um, uh, first of all, I just want to speak about the family. Um, I've been with the family since the start of this trial, and I've never seen a bunch of determined people like the family, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually inspired by the family. And so please put your hands together for the family. And also, my little buddy Shua has 
become quite the speaker now. And, uh, and, and, and she was my little buddy, so I just had to give that out to her. And uh, first of all, I, I, I want to speak about um, the system itself. And I'm just, I've kind of just had it with the system. Uh, I was actually uh, beaten severely by the Minneapolis police on October the 11th, the day they had the attacks in New York. And uh, myself, Communities United Against Police Brutality, uh, we wound up doing a federal class action lawsuit uh, to bring a lot of policy and procedure changes. And that was, uh, behind that, they wound up putting cameras in the police cars. So that was a big victory for the community. So I'm glad to be with the family to try to find justice for the family. Um, also, the, the system itself, uh, I'm just appalled by the system itself. And everybody is included in the system. The judges, the judges that presided over the Fong Lee case, he was in, he was in that little cover-up. Um, the, the, the jury, the jury that they picked all these people to sit on the jury, they was involved in the cover-up. Um, and the gun that was planted, Jason Anderson was on a crime spree that day. He was on a crime spree. And when he started shooting and all that, and he started shooting Fong Lee, the system was right there to bag him up. The system was right there to plant that gun on him. And then the cover up and the whitewash started from that point forward. So we got to fight the system. We got to fight the system. And also, now I want to speak about, and MPD is the biggest circus in this town. And then all these brutal cops they got on them, they're the biggest clowns in this town. And so I just want to say that. But that now I want to talk about Jason Anderson. Jason Anderson, from that moment that he started chasing Fong Lee, crime started. He, and then he, he, he shot Fong Lee, and he made sure that he ended it. He made sure he ended it. And from that point forward, the system and Jason Anderson was, was covering it up and whitewashing everything. So we got to fight that. We got to fight. We, 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 we got to fight for justice. We got to fight for police executions. And we got to fight for police cover ups. We got to fight all that as a community. And until we all come together as a community and fight that as a community, that's the only way that we're going to be successful in doing this. So, again, uh, my name is Daryl Robinson. I'm with Communities United Against Police Brutality. And let's come together as a community. And then after this Fong Lee case, because we're going to take it to the highest court that we can take it to. So the, so the victory going to come from the highest court. So that's good that we're going we're gonna to go to the Supreme Court with this. We're going to win this in the Supreme Court. And then the fight's not going to stop there. It's going to keep on until we can stop all these police executions, police cover-up, police whitewash, all that. So we're going to come together as a community, and we need to be a community. So. Thanks for having me, guys, and we're going to do this. Stay up here. Hey, um, what, oh, hold up. Stay, stay right here. I got, I, I got something for you. Okay, um, what do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Okay, I know it's a little kind of chilly, so go, the person next to you, give the person next to you a hug. <laughs> person next to you a hug. Find somebody. All right. Um, I just want to remind everybody that we have stations and uh, we need more people to sign the petition. So the petition's up there and we need more people to uh, sign the petition and get the uh, information list, so the checkpoints. So check out the checkpoints and the, sign the petition before you leave. <laughs>